It is seven o'clock. Uh, welcome to the Papillion City Council meeting. I will call the meeting to order. For, uh, this is the Papillion City Council, April 7th, 2020. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, I will ask the clerk to take a roll and then I'm gonna, we'll do a couple of administrative things and then I'll make a statement about a virtual meeting. Uh, would you please take the roll? Sunday. Here. Mumgard. Here. Gaines. Here. Glover. Jaworski. Here. Kluke. Here. Stuby. Here. Engberg. Here. Now to try to run the meeting as normal as possible, we do have a handful in the council chambers. It is below 10 and we are more than six feet apart, but um, for the Pledge of Allegiance, I'll ask those on the council to join me in the pledge and the others can just come along silently. Please join me. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you. And do we have an affidavit of publication on file? We do. And a current copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in the council chambers and online at www.papillion.org. Um, I want to make a statement just as far as how the meeting goes, and then we'll get into the regular agenda. Again, virtual meet for a lot of this is, I think, for the public. Um, virtual meetings of the city council have never been authorized by the state legislature. It's always been required. It's uh, in person. Um, the governor, under his emergency powers related to the COVID crisis, did authorize them. Uh, again, with the goal of preventing groups of ten and to, for the social distancing. So they are authorized by an executive order. Um, so everybody, welcome to the first virtual meeting of the Papillion City Council. I anticipate it's going to go smooth. Um, we had a dry run of it. Um, I anticipate it's going to be an orderly meeting, but we are going to be heavily dependent on technology working and audience cooperation. So be patient with us throughout the meeting. Um, the meeting is still being conducted under the rules and the intent of the Open Meetings Act. Um, there, so there will be opportunities for public participation, even though you're muted probably right now. Um, we will open that up at the appropriate time on the agenda. Uh, the primary role of the mayor in any city council meeting is to make sure that the meeting's conducted with decorum. Uh, I think that becomes a little more important when we go virtual. I'm going to ask everyone except for city council members and city clerk to keep their microphones muted until they're ready to speak. Uh, that'll help keep the background noise to a minimum so everybody can hear. Um, if you are attending this uh, and you intend to speak on an agenda item, I will open up time for comments either under the specific public hearing of that item or when I call for proponents and opponents. So again, there will be opportunity to speak. Any member of the public that wants to speak, I'm gonna ask that you very clearly state your name and address for the record, because um, we do need to keep a public record of the meeting. Um, I'm gonna ask that there are no interruptions of any speaker on any topic. Um, if you are on video, um, you may notice some individuals have a blue background and a city logo. Uh, those are the elected officials. Not all of them have that. We had some technology issues with that, but we wanted to at least let you know who was speaking. And then if you see a white background with a city logo, that is a city staff person, and you should also be able to see their name and their title. Um, so if somebody is speaking, you can see exactly what position that is since there's no name tags out there. Um, if you're a presenter on an agenda item, we, per we turned off screen sharing uh, that has been disabled. So you were asked ahead of time to send your presentation materials into City Hall. And if that was done, we do have those and we'll work through those when you have your presentation. Just prompt us for the next slide advance. Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of education for people. The reason we turned off the screen sharing is there have been examples in public meetings on Zoom in the last couple of weeks where the meeting has been hijacked through screen sharing and we're not gonna tolerate that. Um, so we did turn that feature off. Council members, I'm gonna ask that when you make a motion or a second, um, since I can't necessarily always see you and I do wear hearing aids and I don't hear the best, if you would state for the record who makes the motion. So motion by Councilman Klug, second Councilman Glover, and then we'll repeat that to make sure we have it for the record. And then finally, again, for the public, uh, if you're speaking during your portion of the meeting, um, please be patient <clears throat> and take turns. So if one person begins to speak, we'll allow that person to go. Do not speak over them. 
And then when they're done, the next work person can try to come into queue and then I'll attempt as much as I can to moderate that and keep control of that. So long-winded ground rules. Those have been doing Zoom meetings. It's probably natural, but this is probably the very first time for some people on Zoom meetings. Um, so with that, um, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion by Councilman Kloop. Second by Councilman Glover. Do we have any proponents? Is it unmuted? Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? I'm gonna ask a council member to remove item C4 before we vote. Councilman Kluke requests item C4 to be removed. Any council discussion on, on the agenda? If not, please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Aye. Glover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Kluke. Yes. Stubby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item C4, the one we ask to remove. It's resolution R20-0056. It's a resolution to award the contract for Turkey Road to Summit Ridge Transmission Main to SJ Lewis Construction in the amount of three million two fifty-five eight forty-five ninety-five. The reason we wanted this uh, pulled from consent is there is some ongoing negotiations with an impacted property owner, and so staff is asking that it be postponed indefinitely. So I guess we'll look for a motion to table indefinitely. Councilman Engberg, motion. Motion by Engberg. Second. Second by Kluk. Any proponents? Any opponents? Council discussion? Please vote on the motion to table indefinitely. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Aye. Glover. Jaworski. Yes. Kluk. Yes. Stubby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item D1. Ordinance 1873, an ordinance to approve the issuance of tax-supported recreational facility bonds of the City of Papillion, Nebraska, Series 2020, in the principal amount not to exceed $7,990,000. Is there a council member that will introduce? George Introduced by Councilman Klug. Um, as is typical with all bond issues, staff is requesting a waiver of the second and third ordinance, um, and that does require a supermajority. Is there a motion to waive the second and third readings for Ordinance 1873? Councilman Gaines, I'll make a motion. Uh, motion by Gaines, second by Glover. Uh, any proponents? Any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote on the motion to waive second and third. Sunday? No. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Aye. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluk? Yes. Stubby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Seven yeas, one nay by Sunday. Motion passes. So next, is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1873? Motion by Councilman Kluge. Second by Councilman Glover. Any other council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Yes. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. If people are watching the Zoom screen, it looks like it's a typical, a typical meeting. We've got some scouts in the audience and some other students in the audience virtually, so welcome. Um, item D2, Ordinance 1877, an ordinance to approve a change of zone from limited industrial LI to mixed use MU for the property legally described as lots one, two, and four, Prairie Corners five, Replat two, formerly known parts of lots three and four, Prairie Corners five, it's lot five, Prairie Corners five, and lots one and two, Prairie Corners five, Replat one, lots six, seven, and eight, and nine, Prairie Corners two, 
generally located east of the intersection of Highway 50 and Cornhusker Road. The applicant are Love's Trouble, Travel Stops and Country Stores, Inc., Midi Properties, LLC, and Warner Enterprises. Is there a council member that will introduce? Ingberg will introduce. Introduced by Councilman Ingberg. Item E1, Ordinance 1872, an ordinance to approve a change of zone from CC Community Commercial to LC Limited Commercial for the property legally described as lots one and two, Summerfield Second Edition Replat 4, a subdivision generally located northwest of South 72nd Street and Cornhusker Road. The applicant is Point Development Company. This is a public hearing and I'll open it. Um, and just for order, we always will, if people are new to this and they wanna speak, we'll, we'll let the applicant go first. Is the applicant on and wanna speak? We're double checking to make sure everybody's unmuted. Is the applicant on? Yeah, the applicant is present. Uh, Steve okay. Stubblefield, Point Development. Uh, address is 6650 Southwest Redwood Lane, uh, Suite 300, Portland, Oregon, 97224. Thank you. And did you have anything specific you wanted to share or just be on the record that you were here? Um, uh, yes, I'd like to share just for a few minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Mayor Black, council members, thanks for the opportunity to uh, virtually present our project. I'm Steve Stubblefield with Point Development. Uh, also have uh, Kirk Sun with CB2 Architects, Kyle Hazi with ENA Consulting Group, and Stephanie Gray from our Ovation General Manager uh, for our Senior Housing Project in Omaha. Um, Point Development is a growth and development arm of Avamir Companies. Um, we started in 1995, 25 years ago, uh, in Portland, Oregon, with one skilled nursing building. And today, uh, we stretch nationwide and offer a wide range of post-acute senior living options, including skilled nursing, assisted living, home health and hospice, and uh, rehab services and skilled nursing facilities. Um, we're in 18 states, from Alaska to Florida, and have 8,700 employees. Um, we have 65 skilled nursing and assisted living buildings uh, in eight different states uh, across the nation. Um, and uh, it, in thinking about how far we've come as a company, I, I, uh, I think about the dedication and passion that went into it. Uh, Rick Miller, our founder, who's still our day-to-day -day acting CEO, um, exemplifies this. Ten years ago, he took an entire year of his life to spend in one of our communities. I'm going to interrupt you just for one second. If, if you are yep. not speaking uh, right now, could you please mute yourself? We've got some background noise. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, uh, as I was saying, um, Rick Miller, our founder, took a year of his life to live in a community, to eat with the residents, uh, to uh, eat the same food, and, and spend his time with them. And Really, out of that experience came one of our core values, which is uh, passion for the quality of people's lives. Uh, we're also developing another assisted living community in nearby Omaha off uh, Dodge and South 144th Street. That's Ovation Hardwood Preserve, um, which will also offer independent assisted to memory care. Um, lastly, I'll just say, uh, you know, we... Uh, we're excited about being a part of this community, hopefully in Papillion. Uh, our intention is to, um, to not build and sell uh, this proposed building, but to, uh, to build and own and operate uh, into the foreseeable future. Um, so uh, we're excited about that. Um, lastly, I just want to recap and say that we've had two prior meetings. Uh, Tuesday, February 11th, we hosted a neighborhood meeting at uh, Wildwood Christian Church, uh, gave an overview of the project, fielded any questions, had about 10 people that attended from um, all from the neighbor, neighboring residential community to the west. And then on uh, February 26th, as you know, um, we presented at Planning Commission. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce Kirk Sun from CB2 Architects. 
just to give a brief overview of, uh, of the project. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, I had sent in a um, PDF with a couple um, images to display. Should be coming up in a second. Great. Should be up there. Yep. So I'll just point out a couple things for everybody's reference. Um, along the right hand side of our project site is Pinnacle Drive, and the left hand side um, is Magnolia Drive. So we're looking at our main entrance being located on the south end of our site, uh, located along Pinnacle Drive. This provided us the um, flattest opportunity to come in um, at grade uh, to our main building. Um, it is difficult without pointing at the screen for you guys to describe some of this, but our main entry to the assisted living portion of our building is where the, um, yes, the cursor is showing our main driveway there. So if you follow the main driveway towards the larger orange buildings, um, that is where our main entry will be for the independent living and assisted living portion of the building. Um, we will have a drop off there. Uh, that'll be a covered drop off. And then as you can see, there's um, guest parking that will be located in that central area. Um, as you continue to the left of the site, uh, we have on the corner of the building, a component of daycare where Avamir is looking at having daycare on site that have opportunities for whether it be um, staff uh, leaving their kids uh, at the daycare there or even uh, families in the, the neighborhood having the opportunity. Um, as you continue down the drive, the parking lot there, we have a drop off for the dedicated portion of the building that's for memory care, which this portion of the building will be a one story portion uh, it'll be locked and secured. There are 40 private units uh, in that portion of the building. And that central courtyard area of that building will provide the opportunity for residents to go outside uh, when it's nicer out and uh, still get some fresh air, and, and, um, but also be in a safe uh, and contained area. Um, on the south portion of our site in the um, off pink magenta ish color are 12 villas. So the villas are more or less duplexes that uh, an independent resident could live there, have a garage, but then they also have access and be part of the main community where, where they could go and, and have meals and use the common area spaces of the, the main building. Uh, in the bottom left of the site, the southwest corner, we have a separate parcel that we're um, partitioning it off or doing a lot line adjustment, I guess, um, to have the detention basin for our stormwater, uh, as that is the lowest part of our site. Uh, and then just above that, there is a secondary driveway connection that would connect to Magnolia. Um, to be able to provide two points of access for fire department and, and um, to have it another opportunity to get um, in and out of the site. Uh, I did forget to mention on the far north of our site, we do have our service drive and our call it back a house area where we will have deliveries. Um, and this portion is kind of built into the hillside as you can see the uh, black lines there, the topography lines. Uh, we are doing the best we can with trying to create a flat site that um, minimizes the amount of retaining walls, but um, I believe plus or minus, but between Pinnacle Drive and Magnolia Drive, there's about 40 feet of grade difference. So uh, as you can imagine, it makes it difficult to create a large flat area um, without having a handful of retaining walls. 
Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. So this uh, image here is a uh, 3D representation of, of the site plan. Um, it also starts to give a, a feel of how it fits into um, the context of the, the space around. But you can see how our, our building is really more, um, the larger portion, the three-story portion of the building is um, more Eastern justified or closer to Pinnacle Drive as that we felt was the more commercial use and wanted to have as small an impact as we could on Magnolia Drive and the, the neighborhood uh, to the west. And if you could go to the next slide, please. So this is a rendering of the front entry of the building. So um, a very simple covered, um, covered drive and drop off of the independent and assisted living, um, showing kind of what were our concept of the colors and patterns and materials. Um, some of the units will have balconies that you can see on the right hand side there. If you go to the next slide, please. And so this also gives a character. This is actually looking at the, um, well, that'd be the Southeast wing of the independent and assisted living building, um, showing balconies, showing kind of pop outs, our windows, the patterns of exterior materials. Um, and then on the corner, on the right hand side, you can see uh, using some brick and having um, some play a little bit with the brick patterns. Um, and with that, I'm happy to stay on and answer any questions, but um, that's a general review of our, our project. Thank you. Uh, this part of the meeting is the public hearing, so but we do have a related item, F3, later in the agenda where there is a council discussion related to this. So for this part of the meeting, we're going to stay with council discussion, I mean, um, with public hearing. Are there any other proponents? Anybody want to speak in favor? Uh, this is Kyle Hazy with ENA. Yes. Um, as Steve and Kirk had uh, dis described the project um, before you, I also want to include that part of our proposal, um, we are proposing to downsize the property. It is currently zoned CC, and we're down zoning to an LC with senior living, uh, which I believe makes a good transition from the existing commercial uses uh, to the existing residential homes uh, adjacent to the site. Um, and as it is zoned now, the CC zoning allows for uh, your traditional commercial uses, big box stores, drive through restaurants, gas stations, bars, um, all uses with the higher traffic numbers. Uh, in discussion with the uh, traffic engineer, we were told that this use creates 78% less traffic than what those commercial uses could um, uh, create. Um, I think this, um, along with the zoning regulators, which would allow for up to a 75 foot building height, 80% of impervious coverage, and uh, as low as a minimum depth of landscaping adjacent to the right of way, um, as small as 10 feet. Um, all these currently allowed regulators are of greater impact to the neighborhood than what we are imposing. Uh, so, as I mentioned, I believe that this is a good transitional use between the commercial and existing uh, residential. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Anybody uh, want to speak against? I wanted to speak as a proponent. Yes, go ahead. If you'd state your name for the record. Yep, my name is Brian Miller, 1000 Magnolia Court, Papillion, Nebraska, 68046. Uh, I've lived in my current house for approximately 22 years, and my front door faces that field. Uh, in 1996, the neighbors fought the apartments. In uh, 2000, neighbors fought the apartments. And in 2006, neighbors fought the uh, Triton townhomes. 
because all of those were going to be not a good transition. I realized that this field will eventually be developed. And as the previous gentleman spoke, same type of thing I was going to mention is that this will have less traffic than any of those previous ones that were all denied. It will not have any like bars or the backside of a strip mall where I'm going to have trash or the smell of fryers uh, at different hours of the night. It will also not have any impact on the school system except for a tax revenue generation. So I am all for this because I've, we've been fighting all the other ones for a long time. I will, however, mention a couple things that I'm sure that the opponents will mention and was addressed by the previous speaker is the traffic. The last traffic study when I went to the Planning Commission was done in 1991. Uh, we've had quite a bit of growth in this area and uh, Magnolia Avenue right now is just pretty much a 72nd Street bypass after they took out the uh, stop sign at Creighton because people can get between 6th Avenue and um, Centennial a lot easier just by flying right up Magnolia without having to go through the traffic or the stoplights. So I will ask that somebody look into that. Uh, when the Settlers Creek uh, mixed use development went in, there was supposed to be some calming uh, devices put in on 6th Street to reduce the number of traffic and speed along that one, including choke points, medians. In the mixed use agreement, there was the developer had to pay 80% of 335,000 to be used within six years. The only thing I've seen that was actually done during that time frame was a redoing of the Magnolia 6th Street intersection. So somebody really needs to take a look at that between Magnolia and 6th Street because we're just getting too much traffic. And we also have the uh, Papillion Acute Care Hospital that's going up in, at 529 Pinnacle Drive where they're doing all that groundwork. So that's from what I saw in the 2019 annual economic development from Sarpy County. That's gonna be a 22,000 square foot acute care or urgent care type facility. So the traffic around here has gotten a little bad this will have the least amount of anything that could possibly go into that. So I'm an opponent, but I think there's something that needs to be done with traffic. And that's all for my comments. Thank you very much. Do we have any other proponents? Yes. Do we have any, do we have any opponents? <clears throat> Mr. Mumgarden. Well, I yes, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Is Mr. Gilbert a proponent? Yes, I am. I'm here. Let's let him talk. Um, my name is Larry Gilbert. Me and my wife lived at 1012 Hogan Drive for about 25 years. 72nd Street was a gravel road when we built this house. Um, and I would love to be able to see that area stay an open field forever, but I know that that's not going to happen. So I do believe that this is probably our best bet for that area. But that being said, I have a couple ideas that might help is one in your proposal, you say that Pinnacle Drive entrance exit could be a right in, right out if the traffic gets a, becomes an issue. My question is, is if can we make Magnolia Avenue entrance exit a right in left out that would direct the traffic to and from uh, to 6th Street and keep it, keep the people from going using Bren Mauer and Hogan Drive to reach 84th Street and using Magnolia to get to Centennial. And also it sounds like the uh, Point Development Company is going to instruct their employees and all service vehicles to use the Pinnacle Drive entrance exit and that would definitely help with the traffic. My second th idea might be as if a uh, point development company would remove the old entrance signs into Summerfield. That's on both sides of Magnolia Avenue. 
the sign on the east side has been damaged and the city told us that it could not be repaired. So if both signs are removed and then all of the trees and landscaping be removed from the island on Magnolia Avenue, Point Development can install a new Summerfield entrance sign similar to the ones that they are proposing to install at the entrances into their property, except the Summerfield sign would be larger and it would be installed parallel with the island with lighting and electrical capability to install Christmas lighting. That would really be pretty at Christmas time. And then you'd landscape the area where the old signs were removed and the islands to match the same beautiful landscaping that you have planned for along Magnolia Avenue. I think this would really, really make the neighborhood look better. And I would hope that Point Development would want to make the neighborhood look as good for their new tenants as all the people in Summerfield want it to look. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? Anybody want to speak against? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Item E2, Ordinance 1876, an ordinance to approve a change of zone from R2, single family residential medium density, to R4, PUD2, multifamily residential specific planned unit development, for the property legally described as Lot 3, Block 33, Beatles Edition, generally located at 524 North Jefferson Street. The applicant is St. Columbia Hill Church, uh, parish expansion, uh, parish campus PUD expansion. This is a public hearing. Is the applicant on? Yes, this is Kyle Hazy with ENA Consulting Group, 10909 Mill Valley Road, Omaha, Nebraska, 68154. Thank you. Anything to share or just going on the record you're here? Um, I have some, some things to share. Um, uh, representing the applicant, St. Comkill. And uh, if we could bring up exhibit one. Looks like you stole the project from the other people. Thank you for your patience. Um, as shown on the screen, uh, currently highlighted uh, in red is the existing St. Columkill uh, campus. Uh, in purple uh, is the proposed campus addition. Uh, we are requesting the rezone, which is 524 North Jefferson Street. Uh, we are requesting the rezone from R2 to R4 PUD for purposes of expansion of the St. Columkill campus. In May of last year, the City Council approved the PUD for St. Columkill uh, as part of the school expansion and upgrades that is uh, currently in process right now. Uh, the reason for the PUD and rezone was to help to create a consistent campus feel and design and allow for any future expansion of uh, PUD and campus. We go to Exhibit 2. Please. So here on exhibit two, um, 
St. Columkill is currently in the agreement to purchase 524 North Jefferson Street to expand the already approved parking on the corner of East 5th Street in Jefferson. Um, so currently in the southwest corner, um, there's an approved parking lot. Uh, we are expanding to the north side of that lot uh, as shown as this exhibit. Uh, through discussion at neighborhood meetings, uh, past planning boards and city council, uh, it was made aware that some of the neighbors had concerns about traffic backup um, or the streets that pick up and drop, up, drop off times at the school. Uh, the rezone allows for more cars to be rezoned and expansion of the parking lot. Allows for more cars to be off the street, reducing backup and creating a, a safer environment for the kids. Um, our question, are we covering the special use permit at the same time? Thank you. Are we are we covering the special use permit right now as well? Say that again. Are we covering the special use permits required at this time as well? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we've got that a later item. Okay. Uh, um, for that, then I'll make myself available for any questions that you guys might have. Thank you very much. Do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? I'm sorry, this is Dick Van Hout. Um, I'm a yes. proponent. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Dick Van Hout, 2008 Liberty Lane, Papillion 68133. I'm a parishioner at St. Columbkill and uh, chairman of the facilities committee. Um, the parking that uh, Kyle mentioned is uh, going to be important for the new Paris Center, as he mentioned, that uh, uh, is slated to open uh, before school starts. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Um, you know, talking with the uh, principal and uh, some neighbors, um, you know, they're all uh, all for uh, some additional areas for drop off and pick up pick up to um, get some uh, folks off the street. And then obviously, uh, as we have activities in the parish center, this will be a, a great place for that. So um, I that's uh, again, it's important to our um, uh, parish center that's going to be going uh, opening up soon. So thank you. Thank you very much. Any other proponents? Uh, this is Mike Lewis at 543 North Washington Street. Um, I'm kind of neutral on this, but I'm still concerned about the traffic flow. And the big thing here is this uh, region, this uh, lot is bordering on the alley that cuts through the block between 5th and 6th Street between uh, Jefferson and Washington Street. There is already a lot of traffic going through there. And I can see the traffic possibly being increased there. Uh, hopefully, when the construction gets done, the, the uh, traffic flow around this area will be minimized. But recently, there has, have been traffic jams down 5th Street uh, where people turn off of Washington Street to turn into the uh, school area to pick up kids. There's back up south on Jefferson Street uh, likewise, and people use the alleyway as an escape to the west, and uh, uh, just hope that uh, the traffic flow uh, is being addressed in this area because uh, it is a, a very serious problem there for about an hour, hour and a half when uh, school comes in the morning and school lets out in the evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other proponents or anybody neutral? Hearing seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Item F1, Ordinance 1860, an ordinance to amend Section 20511 of Article 2 and, two, and Section 205-218 of Article 34, both of Chapter 205 of the Papillion Zoning Ordinance, having to do with fences. The applicant is the City of Papillion. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1860? Motion by Councilman Clue. Second by Councilman Gaines. Council second by Councilman Gaines. Thank you. Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Bumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Stuby? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item F2, resolution R20-0051. This is a public hearing and a vote. 
resolution to approve a mixed use development agreement for the property legally described as lots one through seven and outlots A and B, North Shore Commercial Replat One, and outlot G, North Shore Commercial, generally located on the northwest corner of South 126th Street and Highway 370. The applicant is BHI Development. Um, this is a public hearing. Is the applicant on? Yes, this is Kyle Hawes with the ENA Consulting Group, 10909 Mill Valley Road, Omaha, Nebraska, uh, represent, representing the applicant, BHI Development. Uh, can we have exhibit one, please? Go ahead. Uh, as, as you can see here, the property is located on the northwest corner of 126th and Highway 370. Uh, it is just to the southwest of Warner Ball Field. Um, can we go to exhibit two? Uh, this is an exhibit uh, showing the site plan. There's roughly 26 acres of developable land already zoned mixed use. Uh, it includes a mix of civic, commercial, residential, and office uses. Uh, the design guidelines with this agreement apply to lots one through five, which are highlighted on the site plan as seen here. Uh, the guidelines will be phased to include the remaining lots at a later date. Uh, we have worked closely with city staff to make sure the agreement meets all the requirements and goals of mixed-use development within the city of Papillion. Uh, the pro project has proposed owners for the site ready to jump start this development. And with that, I'll make myself available for any questions. Thank you very much. Do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? Oh, uh, yes. <clears throat> This is uh, Kyle Sockhild, 1112 Timber Drive. Um, I just wanted to bring up uh, this, this intersection in particular, this is going to go up. I know there's been a lot of talk with the public and the community. There's been a lot of things with uh, accidents happening a lot at that intersection. And based off of the second exhibit, um, there's only going to be one entrance that's actually going to go on to 126th Street, which is going to drastically increase the amount of traffic going on to 370. Um, and I would think if anybody has ever driven down 370, there's quite a bit of traffic that turns on to 370 and sort of parks in the median section. I guess the big question is, is what is going to be done or planned uh, maybe from the developer or uh, in conjunction with the city to try to remedy some of the traffic issues in that intersection, especially for as many accidents that have occurred uh, over the past several months. Mr. Uh, we're in public hearing, but I'd anticipate that question from council. Mr. Sturzma, do you want to make a comment related to that? So the comment was related to accidents at 126 and 370, if I understood it correctly. And I, um, you know, this site was always um, planned for mixed use development. Um, there's the, the primary entrance at the ballpark way. And then there's another right in, right out, possibly full access, um, a few hundred feet to the north of that. Um, I, I would have to go and, and do some some checking to, to check on the volume of, of accidents that are occurring right now at 126 and 370. That improvements to that intersection are not anticipated at this time with, with this project. Well, we will note that uh, comment and concern from on the record, and uh, staff will note that and take a look at that as a as a process moves forward. Are there any other opponents? I'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion to approve resolution R twenty zero zero five one? Motion by Ingberg. Motion by Ingberg. Second by Glover. Any council discussion? Well, Mountain has a question. Go ahead. With respect to the traffic or the situation at that intersection, since that's a, a highway 370 is a state highway. Would we have anything to say about that at all? Mr. Sturzma or Mr. Thompson? 
So it, you're, you're absolutely right, uh, Council Mumgard. Anything that, uh, any improvements that we would want to make on Highway 370 would have to be approved by the state and coordinated through the state. That would be their responsibility. Well, okay. I, I, of course, looking at the plat for this development on the west side, there's a lake, a park. Um, so there appears it can only be one way in and out, and that's onto that street that then exits onto 370. So yeah, I listened to the comments and worthwhile comment to consider, but I can't conceive of anything that could be done, uh, at least by us, without significant, um, or by the developer, without significant redevelopment of that intersection. Um, so, so, you know, is that something that we really ought to consider at this point? Is it worth, worth considering? I'll ask that of the planning director. Yeah, so the, the 126th Street along with the 120th Street were all improved um, with the development of uh, the ballpark. And so those improvements are essentially at their, at this point in time, final stage. There are long-term plans of the NDOT to uh, improve 370 to a sixth lane, um, which would then create more capacity on the highway and, and some of those intersections would have to get looked at at that time. Um, but at this point, those intersections are, are essentially in their, their final configuration and, until those, that widening occurs on the highway. Okay, thank you. Any other council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Lover? Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item F3. This is a related item to the previous one where, about the retirement facility. Um, resolution R20054. This is a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a special use permit to allow retirement residential as the principal use of lots one and two. Summerfield second edition replat four, a subdivision generally located northwest of South 72nd Street and Cornhusker Road. The applicant is Point Development Company. It is a public hearing, I'll open it. I will note for the record, all of the comments from the previous item we will carry over to this item as well in the minutes. So not necessarily a, a need to repeat, but if there's new information, any proponents? Are there any opponents? Seen and hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion to approve resolution R20054? Motion Mayor by Councilman Council Glover. Was, Mayor that a Councilman by, was that a second by Councilman Jaworski? Yes, but can I Thank say something too? Oh. Yep, council discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Jaworski. Well, I think it was Mr. Gilbert that brought up um, six in the intersection. Uh, uh, signs, the Summerfield sign, and try to match the, uh, try to match the, uh, uh, um, all the stuff that they're going to do from um, trees and stuff. I think that's something that somehow we need to maybe chat with them and see where we can go with that also. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Uh, yeah, Mom, uh, Councilman Mumgard has a question. I have a question for the applicant. Can the applicant come back? Somebody from the applicant come back? Yes, uh, I'm available. This is Steve Stubblefield. <laughs> Are we going to get somebody? Yes, you did. He's there. Okay. Yep. Uh, who do I have? Uh, Steve Stubblefield with Point Development. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stubblefield, yeah, Mr. Gilbert asked a couple questions that I do want to hear your response to. And let's go with the sign that Councilman Gillespie just brought up. Uh, what's your reaction to the suggestion that you uh, rebuild that entry sign there that's going to, you know, to write half a block of the entrance? Yeah. yeah. 
And if I understand correctly, um, it sounds like that sign is near the proposed entrance off of Magnolia into our proposed development. Is that correct? Uh, it's about a half block away, yeah. Well, about a half block away from Pinnacle, Bank, Pinnacle Road at Pinnacle Street. You know, so it, it's, put it this way, it's a sign that a good number of your employees and uh, visitors will be driving past. Right. Yeah, I think um, in short, uh, we are open to um, uh, more signage and uh, working with uh, uh, the, the neighborhood there. And if that means that's on the median there, um, you know, off Magnolia, uh, and, and getting a sign that, uh, you know, points to our community and uh, the neighboring residential development, uh, that's, uh, we're very open to that. Okay, when you say you're open to it, if we made the special use permit conditioned upon um, the improvements being done to that sign to the acceptance of uh, the city, would you go along with that? I yes, hate to interrupt, but this time. is Kyle Hazy with ENA. Am I allowed to speak? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Um, and this might be a question for uh, Mark Sturzma. Um, from what I understand, that sign is currently in the median of the street. Is, no. is that currently allowed within sign regulations within the city of Papillion? Yes. Mr. Sturzma. We, we do have a process for, for signing the decoration in, in the, or within the right of way. Um, it's it's uh, in the form of a lease agreement. Well, that's a, that's a neighborhood sign. Uh, certainly, Mark, aren't those allowed? Uh, we, they exist, yeah. The, the process would be that there's just an agreement that if for them to be located in the right of way, um, it's, it's set up similar to what you would call a lease agreement. Okay, so if, if we wanted to compel, some, compel the developer to pay to improve that sign, as the neighbors have asked, how would we go about doing that? I, well, what I'm hearing is the, so the sign is for Summerfield, which is a res, the, the neighborhood sign. Um, the project is not within Summerfield, it's within um, a different SID. Um, I guess the, the question would, would probably be one, a financial one of, you know, first of all, how much would that cost Avenir to do that? And then the second, what I'm hearing them say is they would, all, for them to agree to that, they would want to put their own name um, on that sign. So it would be advertising for them as well. Well, who currently owns the sign? So that was installed a long time ago with that neighborhood. Um, if it's in the right of way, um, and, unless there was some specific arrangement made uh, for uh, ownership uh, retainment, it's probably probably the city's. I, I, I guess I'd have to do some research to find out for certain. Well, okay. Um, Well, I, I think we ought to consider um, making that, uh, making a contribution from the developer to the improvements of the sign, a condition of that special use permit. Um, how, would we, how do we go about doing that, Mark? So the, the special use permit um, you're voting on tonight and that's, that's contingent upon um, the change of zone being approved at a, a later third hearing. The, um, the appropriate, load, if that were a contingency, it would be appropriate for, more appropriate for that to be with the special use permit um, than for the, the change of zone. So you would want to do that as, as a part of the motion for uh, the special use permit tonight. Well, how about if I made a motion to lay over 
uh, we approve the vote on the special use permit until the time we vote on the zoning also. So we vote on both about the same time. We have a motion to lay over. Is there a second? Hearing none, motion dies. We're back to the original motion. Any other council discussion? Well, I've got another question for the developer. Go ahead. Uh, I, I don't know who wants to answer, but Mr. Gilbert also had um, a question that I think we ought to consider. That drive over there uh, on Magnolia, making that a right in, left out, so that traffic does not, there's no purpose of the traffic going north of this on Magnolia. Uh, what's the developer's reaction to that request? So if I understand correctly, uh, coming out of the proposed development, um, we could not go right onto Magnolia. Correct. You could only go south down to 6th Street, half a block away. Block away. Uh, um, and and uh, just the rationale for that, um, understanding the, the uh, the, the request there, um, it's just traffic motivated for that neighborhood. Um, I guess we're, we're uh, we're open to uh, trying to think through what would be an inconvenience for the folks that are at that community that maybe live in the neighborhood north um, that are part of the community. Um, you know, they have a family member that are further up. Um, I, I just thinking it through, uh, it hasn't been something that came up before in planning commission. Um, uh, you know, uh, open to it. Uh, but just want to think that through for those residents, I guess, is, is it a major concern for, for traffic for that particular part of the street? Well, the goal would be to make the traffic coming and going uh, from your your project, make them use 6th Street and 72nd Street and not mm -hmm. Magnolia North and South. Uh, that would, okay, let me, let me pose the question then to Mark Sturzma. Uh, Mark, you've been in this business a long time. Um, as the planning director, do you have a view on whether that makes sense to try to divert the traffic there that's coming out on the Magnolia, Magnolia to divert it south and to keep the traffic that comes into Magnolia, into the development from coming down from the north on Magnolia? What view do you have? Yeah, you know, we've, we've looked at traffic on this project um, with, with its original application and then there were some comments at Planning Commission and, and we we thought those through as well. Um, ultimately, staff did not recommend any limitations on the driveway to Magnolia uh, for these reasons. Uh, one, the primary access we think will be um, off of Pinnacle Drive because that's a lot more shallow um, connection and you, when you think about the slope of the driveway. This, the driveway that is gonna be coming off of Magnolia has a pretty steep grade to it. So at a minimum, we think any truck traffic, deliveries, things like that, because of that slope, we'll, we'll definitely use Pinnacle Drive. Um, the other thing we thought about was the, the uses that are permitted by right today that would have driveway connection to Magnolia uh, would be more commercial in nature and actually generate a lot more traffic than this use will. And, and if those uses weren't limited on their access, we didn't think it was necessary to limit the access on this one. Um, that, that section of Magnolia is over with and was intended for commercial traffic. And then the third thing would be the, just the practicality of a, either a right in, right out, or, or even a right in, left out. Um, it's, it's really difficult to get people with free will to, to follow signage and, and actually honor right in, right out. Um, a right in left out restriction would be even more difficult to design and enforce. So just practically speaking, I, I think a right in left out would be very difficult to design and construct. Um, and I would say even a right in right out would have its limitations. 
Uh, so that that was our thought process in, in recommending approval of the driveway configuration as proposed. Thank you, Mr. Glover. Yes, um, I had the opportunity to attend the planning session, um, and uh, I would have to say it was it was kind of enlightening because I thought the uh, planning commission spent a lot of time on the traffic issue and and. Um, and uh, kicked it around quite a bit. Most of them asked questions. And at the end, um, they all voted unanimously not to do anything with the, with the um, uh, issue of, of the traffic, as in particular the right in, right out, or, or left, left out, right in. Um, the, you know, and I think one of the comments that was made at the at the planning commission, the street was wide enough to accommodate traffic. Um, I I see at the end of the uh, the end of Magnolia when you get to the top of the hill, there's a church that has um, two huge parking lots, and most of the traffic that uh, goes to that church uh, parks back there. And I I've I've been a council member for a number of years, and I haven't heard any complaints about traffic going up and down. Um, and I think, you know, to Mark's point, um, <coughs> excuse me, I think that um, all you have to do is go to, to uh, over to Walmart across 72nd Street and, and look at their uh, right out, um, right in, le uh, no left out. And uh, you can see uh, about 75% of the cars that just blow by that and don't even pay attention to it. Um, they're not gonna go down to the end of the block and turn around and come back up. So I, I'm, I think like Mark said, I, I, I just think all we'd be doing is adding on expectations for our police department to, to police it. I, I, I think as I heard at the planning meeting and I heard tonight, this company is willing to, to uh, direct most of their traffic away from that intersection. And uh, I, I think uh, I, I would have to believe them. And, and I think it's, to me, the important thing is this piece of property set for a number of years. And we finally have a, a pretty good consensus of something that's going to go in that's going to maintain uh, the, the style that people like to see, uh, like like was mentioned earlier, no, um, no bars, no box stores, no uh, grease smell from McDonald's and, and some of the other uh, potential things that could go in there. So, um, so from, from that standpoint and the traffic, um, I, I think the street's wide enough. I think the commitment from the company is there. I see no reason that we would, would try to uh, make this harder for, um, snow removal for uh, policing and, um, and, and people to follow directions. Ms. Kluf. Thank you. I just want to sort of echo, I guess, what Councilman Glover just said. To me, that Magnolia is a collector street. It was designed to have slightly heavier traffic than what some of the other streets are. And realizing that this developer took the time to design this project where the primary traffic is going to be up on Pinnacle Drive, um, more where the commercial site is, I think they've already done their due diligence. They've specifically designed it so that Magnolia Street is not the priority road to be used. And so therefore, I really think that leaving it open to be both left and right out would be the proper way to handle it. Thank you. Is there any other council member that wants to discuss? Mr. Sunday. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor. Um, I agree that we shouldn't treat different people differently. I know St. Martha's doesn't have that restriction. Um, and I think someone just mentioned that. But uh, I do have a question for Mr. Sund. If uh, he could bring that 3D photo back up. We need to bring that up from council chambers. Bear with us for just one minute. Mayor, are we still on? Are we still on? Uh, have we moved to council discussion yet, or are we still on the item? No, we're on council discussion. Okay. And Mr. Mayor, Sunday's, I want to say one. Uh, Mr. Sunday's got the floor. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm waiting for, oh, there it is. Okay. Um, my question was, I don't see any walking access for the residents to a sidewalk <laughs> along Magnolia. Was that discussed at all? Yeah. Yep. Excuse me. Uh, if you go go back um, to the A1.0 uh, sheet. Okay. So you cut you caught the issue that my uh, graphics guy forgot to put the sidewalks in the 3D rendering. But if you do look in this one, we do have sidewalks along Pinnacle and along uh, Magnolia okay. and access for our residents to be able to get there. I see that. What I don't see though is a connecting sidewalk to the street sidewalk. Yeah, there, um, we will, yeah, it isn't shown there. Um, we will have a sidewalk connecting to Magnolia. Part of the challenge uh, is a straight connection from our site paralleling the drive straight down would not meet ADA. And so we would need to run north with the sidewalk a little bit before it could connect to Magnolia to meet ADA. So you'll but we slant, will have access. Slanting northwards so they don't have a difficult slope? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other council discussion? Yeah. Council yeah, Mayor, just Mr. Jaworski. I just kind of want to clarify what I didn't say right the first time about the development. The developers working on maybe the sign and matching the, uh, oh, I can't, I can't even think again. This, this has got me really confused, but matching all the um, trees and everything that they put in, make sure everything looks the same. Thank you. Mr. Mumgard, did you have something else? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, Okay, I, I can agree. I'll concede uh, our planning director makes a good point that forcing traffic to go south on uh, Magnolia probably won't work. So um, that was a good point to bring up, but it is going to work. But I, the, I'll address principally to Mr. Gilbert and the neighbors um, about the sign. Um, I would suggest that that's an appropriate expense. The city owns it. And uh, it would be an appropriate expense for the city to make improvements of that sign with the neighborhood grant program. Uh, that has been used to improve areas, uh, you know, neighborhood signs in the past. And I would encourage Mr. Gilbert and others in the neighborhood to, you know, contact me or Mr. Stuby. Uh, we can certainly help you out and give you some direction on applying for the neighborhood grant to improve that sign. But then I will also respectfully disagree with our planning director when he suggests that um, this development is not in Summerfield, that Summerfield is the area to the west and this is a separate SD. I would just tell the developer, no, you are part of the Summerfield neighborhood. And I would suggest it would be a good neighborly thing for you to consider making a contribution to your neighbors in by way of that neighborhood grant. That, uh, that doesn't need to be just city money. Oftentimes that's money that also has to be added to that by neighborhood people. My neighborhood has done that. We, you know, bring up, we get contributions from neighbors to supplement the grant money. I think that would be an excellent thing for this development to do, to recognize they are now part of Summerfield and they need to be a good neighbor. So I would encourage you to keep watching for that. And Mr. Gilbert, I would encourage you to move forward on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? Yes, Mayor, I have a comment. Mr. Stubbe, go ahead. Thank you. So um, I, I would agree with Mr. Mumgard relative to the signage and the neighborhood grant. I think that's an appropriate uh, way to go. Uh, yes, uh, I, I would also agree that uh, the, the new development potentially could be part of the neighborhood. And so maybe some sweat equity would be uh, beneficial to the Summerfield neighborhood if they consider moving in that direction. Um, I would also agree with my other colleague relative to Magnolia. I would not support 
any right in left out at that location. Obviously, we have development guidelines that support connectivity, and I would agree with the applicant that there's a potential for Papillion residents to either work at the facility or have um, relatives or close friends that might be even residents at that facility. So uh, I think it's it's important to, to leave uh, that connection to Magnolia as it is. I do have one question for the developer and, and or maybe a couple questions. One would be from the perspective of, of the location where the deliveries are coming in. I would hope that the um, those deliveries, when you communicate with the companies that you're doing business with, that you would remind them and suggest to them that they utilize uh, the 72nd Street access to get access to that location. Uh, the other question I would have to the applicant is with regard to uh, employee parking, is, is that on the east side of the building, on the west side of the building, close uh, to the, uh, uh, the daycare facility? And, and with that, I just want to, once those questions are answered, if I have more, I'll jump in. But I uh, also want to just indicate, I think this is a great project. Obviously, this property has sat vacant for many, many years, and I strongly support this project. Does the applicant have a, want to comment on Mr. Yeah. Stubbe's questions? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we will... Um, Definitely encourage our deliveries to come off of the pinnacle um, entrance there and come back around uh, the kind of uh, east side where the service entrance is um, as to have the least impact on uh, the, the neighbors to the west there in Summerfield. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, employee parking, um, I think mostly will be on the east side uh, for some of the folks that work <coughs> uh, in the, the memory care wing of the building. Um, may park uh, up on the, um, the west side there, uh, but for the most part, we'll encourage um, employees to park uh, on the east side there. Uh, so, um, does that answer both of the questions you have? Yes, it did. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Mr. Stubbe? No, that's it. Thanks. Um, okay. Mayor, can I, can I add on to that? Go ahead, Mr. Mumgard. Um, I'm thinking of the signage. I hear this discussion about encouraging people. Um, uh, will there be signage at the corner of Pinnacle and 72nd and Pinnacle and 6th Street to indicate that that's how you get to Avamir? Uh, Kirk, that remind me where we have our, uh, our signs, because I know we discussed this with yeah. planning and there were some limitations on how many signs we could have. Um, on uh, yeah, uh, next to the building. Yeah, so we have two locations for monument signs right now. Um, one is at the location of our driveway and the connection to Pinnacle, and the other is at our driveway and the connection to Magnolia. We don't have property up at Pinnacle and 72nd um, or Pinnacle and 6th or Cornhusker at that point to place our signs in those areas. Sir, I understand. Uh, and maybe this is something more for the planning department. I'm thinking more of a directional sign. Uh, just just the sign with the arrow that says Avamir is up that way. It, you know, I, I assume you're not against that. No, we'd be uh, not against more signage there. Okay, thank you, that's all. Thank you, any other council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Bumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item F4, resolution R20 0058, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a special use permit to authorize improvements within the downtown overlay district for the property legally described as block 32 Beatles Edition lot one, Beatles Edition replat two and lot three and four block 33. Beatles Edition generally located at 224 East 5th Street. The applicant is St. Columbia Hill Church. It is a public hearing. I'll carry all the comments over from the previous public hearing. Are there any additional comments? Proponents? Yes, this is Kyle Hazy with the ENA Consulting Group, 10909 Millville Road. 
on Nebraska Thank you. 8154. Thank um, you. Moving on from uh, the discussion that we had earlier, um, if you want to bring up uh, exhibit one again. As you can see on the aerial, um, there is a uh, existing single family within the expansion area at 524 North Jefferson Street. Um, as part of that expansion that parking lot, uh, we were requesting a special use permit for the existing structures, uh, including that single family home. And there's also a small shed um, at the back that would need to be demoed for the um, expansion. Um, of that uh, parking lot. Um, are we also covering signage or is that next for the special use permit? Thank you. Go ahead. Are we covering uh, the SUP signage at this time as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. If you could go to exhibit three. Um, we're also requesting a special use permit to allow signage, uh, commercial signage within an R4 zoning. Uh, the proposed signage um, is a uh, pin lettering that is halo lit. Um, this lettering is on the west side of the New Paris Center, uh, as seen here. Um, the Mary and Joseph is just, it's not what it's going to be called, um, but that would be funny if it was, I guess. Um, those letters are approximately one foot in height. Um, they are on the west side of the building. Um, so they are not facing towards any immediately adjacent residential homes. Um, I'll let you, if you have any questions, I can uh, my best to answer them. Thank you very much. Do we have any other proponents? Do you have any opponents? I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R20058? Councilman Councilman Glover. Motion. Councilman Gaines will second. Second by Councilman Gaines. Okay, any council discussion? Mayor. Yes, Mr. Jorsky. No, Bob Stubbe here. Oh, Mr. Stubbe, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so there was a comment both, made. Both are bald. Yeah, <laughs> there, there was a comment made about uh, kind of cut through traffic down through the alley there. And, and I guess I'm just looking at it from the perspective is, is that has that been an issue that the city has seen? Um, has there been any discussion potentially about making that alley one way only to, to eliminate the potential for cut through traffic? I'm gonna look I, to Mr. Sturzma for that one. Yeah, I, I can speak to that a little bit. So the, if you look at the, the plan, the, I think originally St. Clement would hope to acquire both of the residential properties along Jefferson on either side of the alley. And so we looked at the, the need to keep that alley open and we concluded that it was necessary for that to remain two way because there's a house um, along that alley that fronts onto Washington Street that really takes its primary access through the alley. Uh, if you can imagine, it's very difficult to turn left into a driveway um, off of Washington Street and that particular house has a, uh, its driveway and garage off of the alley at the rear of the property. So uh, we think it's important that the alley uh, remain. Um, if in the future St. Columkill acquires the other residents um, to, to have a parking lot along the, the entire western edge of Jefferson on that block face, we would still want uh, some type of an access um, to that alley. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Fluke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? 
Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F5, resolution R20-0063. A resolution to approve a final plat for the property legally described as attractive land located in the south half of the northeast quarter of section 35, township 14 north, range 11 east of the 6 p.m., Serpy County, Nebraska, generally located on the northwest corner of Highway 50 and Gold Coast Road. The applicant is Development Services Corp, R&R Commerce Park, Phase 3. Is there a motion to approve resolution R20-0063? Motion I'll by make Councilman that. Luke. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Is there any proponents? Any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubby? Yes. Engberg? Mr. Ingberg. Is Mr. Ingberg still in the meeting? We lost Mr. Ingberg. Mr. Ingberg exited the meeting. We'll note that for the record. Seven yeas, zero nays, one Motion. absence. Motion passes. Next is item F6, resolution R20-0064, a resolution to approve the second amendment to the r, &R Commerce Park Subdivision Agreement. Is there a motion to approve resolution R20-0064? Motion. Motion by Councilwoman Klug. Was that a second by Councilman Sunday? Yes. Okay, second by Councilman Sunday. Do we have any proponents? Opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Hungard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight no. yeas, zero nays. And I'll note for the record, Mr. Engberg is back in the meeting. Next is item F7, resolution R20-0066, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve an application for moving a building or structure permit to move one building from its current location at 13104 South 150th Street, Springfield, to its future location, 16116 Cape Road. <coughs> the applicant is Donald Keyes. This is a public hearing and I'll open it. Do we have any proponents? I don't know if the applicant is with us or not. Do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion to approve resolution R20-0066? Councilman Gaines, I'll make a motion. Motion by Councilman Gaines. Councilman second Sunday, Councilman second. Glover. Uh, I grab uh, Mr. Glover for the second. Right. Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Dubey? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F8, resolution R20-0069, a resolution to accept the grant of a permanent sanitary sewer easement from Fireball Group LLC along Gold Coast Road at or near its intersection with future 150th Street. Is your motion to approve resolution R20-0069? Motion. Motion by Councilman Sunday. Second by Councilman Kluke. Do we have any proponents? Any opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. 
Item F9, Resolution R20-0070, Resolution to accept the grant of a permanent easement from BHI Investment Company for stormwater sewers southwest of Gold Coast Road, east of its connection with Cooper Street. Is there a motion to approve Resolution R20-0070? Councilman Sunday moves. Motion by so Councilman moved. Sunday. Second by Councilman Kluk. Do we have any proponents? Opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Lover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Stubby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F10, resolution R20-0071. A resolution to revoke resolution R20-0061 and to implement the Family's First Coronavirus Response Act. Is there a motion to approve resolution R20-0071? Councilman Gaines moves. Um, motion by Councilman Gaines. Second by Councilman Sunday. Count second by Councilman Sunday. Do we have any proponents? Any opponents? Do we have any council discussion? Please could, vote. Could I just ask how are we? Uh, how are we? How is this going to change what we've already done? Um, actually, I'll let Miss Myers jump in if I'm if I'm stating it wrong. Um, but we passed the original resolution, the one we're revoking. We passed that before any federal legislation came down. Um, so we actually got ahead of the feds, and we wanted to uh, approve uh, sick leave for the corona if somebody was quarantined. After we passed that, then the federal regulation was passed. And so this brings us into alignment with federal, uh, federal law. If you've got a specific question though, or a specific comment, I'd look to Ms. Myers. Ms. Myers? I, I would, thank you, Mayor Black. I would just add that in addition to the 80 hours of sick leave provided to full-time employees and part-time employees receive an equivalent number of hours that they would work in a two-week period. It also adds potentially 12 weeks of a, like an FMLA protected uh, work situation where an employee could be gone for 12 weeks. 10 of those weeks would be paid at two-thirds their hourly rate for the purpose of caring for a minor child in the event of school closing or daycare closing. So that is in addition to what you had approved originally. Thank you. Any other questions related, Mr. Sunday? No, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Jaworski? Yes. Kluk? Yes. Stubby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. If you have a dog in the house, if you would mute your microphone, please. Um, that's all the regular agenda items. Uh, Finance Administration Committee did meet. Is there a report out from that? Uh, yes, Mayor. Councilman Engberg. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll get through this before my iPad shuts off again. Um, we had three items on the agenda tonight. Uh, the first item was um, an election of a uh, chairman for the committee. Uh, I remain the chairman. Um, the next item was uh, a discussion of city fireworks ordinance. That came about because a couple, and one or two council people expressed some concern uh, because we had an additional uh, one or two nonprofits apply this year. So, uh, we did some discussion about the current ordinance, which was passed in 1991. I gave some history uh, regarding uh, what happened prior to 1991, which led to the ordinance change. Um, long and short of it is after much discussion, uh, we decided uh, to do a real simple thing, uh, keep, the, keep the ordinance basically status quo because it's worked well since 91, and that is to increase the permits to 12 rather than 10. That will allow nonprofits, like this year, we had an additional nonprofit to be able to give them access 
um, and uh, um, solve that dilemma. So uh, that's what we're going to recommend, the unanimous uh, recommendation to increase the permits to 12. And of course, according to our, our current ordinance, nonprofits would get priority. Um, we next discussed the 2020 annexation number one, and uh, the committee recommended moving uh, the uh, annexation number one, uh, four to zero to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Uh, no other committees met. Um, this is the part in the agenda. If you're new to us, we ask for comments from the floor. Um, it's going to be hard to see anybody coming up. Historically, if there's students in the audience, I make them come up and introduce themselves. I won't do that this time, but I will recognize I think we know we have some students here. Um, so hopefully you've learned something about how government works in a, in a crisis. And we also had some scouts on. And uh, we got a special guest that I noticed in the window. Mr. Glenn Ellis uh, is with us. Uh, he's a councilman for the city of Fremont, and we actually traded some messages on social media because I think they're trying to think through how do you do special meetings. So I think he's in maybe learning, and there's a lot of that going on with different jurisdictions during the crisis. Uh, there's been a lot of cooperation amongst jurisdictions learning from each other during this time. So welcome, Councilman Ellis from uh, Fremont. Um, any comments from the floor? Hearing none, any council comments? Mayor? Mr. Stubbe, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mayor. So uh, these are gonna be finance related questions. So whoever wants to, to take this. So one question I have is related to sales tax. So obviously uh, during this period of time, our, our sales tax receipts from the state kind of lag by, I don't know, one, two, three months. So um, relative to what, what do we anticipate from the standpoint of of reduced uh, sales tax relative to the situation we're going through. Also, uh, any estimates with regard to, obviously, if anybody's driving anywhere, they see nobody else is on the road. So sales tax, or excuse me, uh, gas tax allocation from the state most likely will be impacted. And then the last question I have is related to uh, the interest rate environment we're in is, is, is real low. And so are we looking at uh, some additional uh, bonds potentially uh, that, that we might be able to refinance uh, because of the low interest rate environment? Thank you, Mayor. Let me, let me take that. Um, and uh, one of the things I was going to update a council on, we actually, I think it was on Thursday, um, we actually had a call with Moody's. Um, those that aren't aware, um, when we do bond issues, we started, I think, about eight, nine years ago having those uh, bonds rated by Moody's um, with the hope that we could get a better interest rate. And um, we've always had an investment grade bond. And a couple of years ago, Moody's actually raised us another level. Um, and because of the rec bond we just approved, we wanted that to be Moody's rated. So before the crisis hit, we scheduled the call with Moody's. Um, and then all of a sudden you get in the middle of the crisis, probably the worst time ever to say, hey, give us a credit rating. Um, but I will tell you, Mr. Stubbe, we talked a lot about um, situations related to the to current crisis. Um, we talked all the way, what if it's just a temporary blip for a couple of months and then everything comes back. And we also look worst case, what if it happens and we're down all summer and it's a longer recovery, what's that look like? So we had, a, we had a lot of discussion with Moody's on these topics. Basic summary that I would say that I gave them um, was absolutely there's gonna be a reduction in sales tax and uh, hotel occupation tax and the gas taxes, absolutely no question. Um, but where we took that initially, where we believe um, the last four to five years, probably five years, um, if you think through our budget practices and the updates we've given, we've been extremely conservative. Um, when we look at our sales tax projections, um, I think we've generally budgeted about 3% increase for the year on sales tax. Um, when we did it for the recreation center, we were probably more in the range, somewhere in that two to four range. Um, and so that's been our historical practice, where in reality, our receipts have been up in the seven, eight, nine percent range. And so those extra, that extra cash has either gone into cash reserves. Um, it has allowed us to do things out of cash instead of bonding them. So we're weaning away from debt over those years. 
Um, we've called some debt during that period of time because of that. We've done some special projects during that period of time. So what that means now, we've been talking the last four to five years of things are not always going to stay great. There's going to be a period of time when we hit a recession. We just don't know when it is. Um, as Ms. Myers said the other day, it's now. Um, and so really what our plan has always been is when that recession hit, we don't have to keep scared and react. We just keep doing what we're doing because you know what? Our, our projections have been conservative. We have built the cash reserves. We have debt service emergency reserves. So if, uh, if the revenues go away, we still meet our obligations. So um, from that perspective, we're really just executing the plan that we put in place. Um, that would be a best case scenario. Um, worst case would be it goes on for quite a while and sales tax drops deeper than we anticipated. Um, and if that's the conversation then and we're into a longer recovery, part of it is we just stay with the plan and tighten spending. Um, we've been very conservative in not adding employees over the years. We've tried to look at uh, smarter ways to do, to do things, automation, best practices, redefining work. So I don't believe we're in a position at all where we would be looking at any layoffs. Um, we're, we're scalable with our workforce, we believe. Um, if, long, if it's a long-term thing, um, there'd just probably be some of the projects that we budgeted that we would hold off on. Uh, the good news is we have not gotten behind the last few years on capital improvement projects. So if we don't do a lot of capital improvements one year, it's not like we're getting behind, we're just not addressing things ahead of the schedule. So we wouldn't create an issue with deferred maintenance. Um, so that's a positive. Um, so we could tighten spending without causing a problem to offset it. We could use the reserves to offset it. We could even dip into the emergency reserves if we needed to, if it went on for a long period of time. What I'll say next though is, let's even say sales tax drops, make it up 75% um, for an entire year, uh, which would be pretty dramatic. Um, remember last year, the state legislature implemented online sales tax. We did not budget for any of that online sales tax in our, in our budget projections. So what we believe a little bit is if the retail sales tax drops, the gas tax drops, the hotel occupancy drops, we're picking up online sales tax we never budgeted for. Um, so that should cover some of that dip. And then also if people are being stuck in their house for a really long time and can't go to the store, what are they doing? They're buying online. And so for the first time we have the online sales tax. So that was kind of a long winded summary of the Moody's conversation. And I would say that I think they walked away pretty comfortable that we've got a plan and um, we stick with it and we'll ride through it and we're not gonna be in bad shape. Did you have a specific question in there, Mr. Stubbe that I did not hit? No, you, you covered it very good. And I, I guess part of the reason why I wanted to ask the question is to try to make sure that the public is aware of the fact that when we get through this, because of the fact that we've been very conservative in our estimates relative to sales tax receipts and, and the budgeting that we go through is that when, when the library is open back up and when the landing is open back up and the ball fields are open back up, we've got staff available to be able to accommodate all of those activities. And I think that's the message moving forward. Thank you. It will be interesting because next week we should get uh, the Moody's rating. So we'll that will reiterate if what I said was right or not. Any other council? Oh, a couple of updates then um, of mine. Um, we are having a daily briefing. Um, actually, Papillion hosts it. It started out initially at the beginning of the COVID emergency that we just got together with kind of Papillion, uh, Leviston, and Bellevue just to make sure if we're making decisions that we're maybe making some common ones so we didn't confuse the public with different messages. Um, that meeting has actually turned into a daily uh, 9.30 a.m. multi-jurisdictional call that involves the mayor, the administrator, the police chief, fire chief, and the communications people from Papillion, La Vista, Bellevue, Gretna, Springfield, and Plattsmouth. It includes Sarpy County Health Department, uh, SARPI Emergency Management, SARPI Sheriff, the County Attorney, the Election Commissioner, and the Administrator. And it also includes the Colonel from the Offutt 55th uh, Mission Support Group, 
And we also have a representative from Congressman Bacon's office and Congressman Fortenberry's office. Um, and that meeting occurs every weekday. Um, we start out with a, an official update from the health department. The director herself gives us a real-time update of what the last 24 hours were and what do they forecast for the next 24. And then we have a round robin amongst every one of those individuals to lead off with a topic they might wanna have discussed that we need to think about, about cooperatively. Um, and it's been an excellent meeting. Um, to ask a couple of times if we need to cancel it and everybody is no, let's hold it. Sometimes it's only five minutes, sometimes it's a half hour, but um, just to let you guys in the public know that all of those jurisdictions in Sarpy County are getting together from all of those perspectives every single day. Um, the other thing we're doing is um, the White House uh, uh, Vice President Pence and the task force has a weekly update with uh, elected officials from around the nation that we get invited into. And so we get to hear directly from the cabinet members um, and the uh, other individuals to give a weekly update. Um, it's not a Q&A, but at least we get to hear directly from them. And then every week, Governor Ripkitz has an update with all, all, uh, all mayors uh, across Nebraska. And he gives a weekly update and that one is an open dialogue. We get to ask questions back and forth and he will respond there as well. And usually the Department of Health and Human Services is on that call as well. So we got a lot of good communication at federal, state and local levels in Sarpy County going on during the crisis. Um, that's most of what's been taken up the time. Um, the, I do wanna say that staff internally also gets together every single day at nine o'clock. Um, that's all of the department heads, Ms. Myers and Mr. Green, again, to talk about our daily operations response to COVID. A major portion of that is about how we continue to keep city operations going um, while we protect individuals, talking contingency plans for the day and the week and the month and address any issues. So thank you for everybody doing that. Our, our, uh, the city staff is doing heroic efforts um, related to the emergency. Um, and then at least for tonight's meeting, um, again, this is the first time the Pavilion City Council has ever met, uh, met virtually. And um, we, we put a lot of pressure on staff to pull it off where we weren't just kind of winging it on the fly. There was a lot of planning that went into this. We specifically want to uh, thank Ms. Ellis, uh, Mr. Pantelian, Mr. Green, um, that have worked really hard. We actually had a dry run of the City Council meeting on Wednesday and it did show some blips and none of those blips showed up tonight. It ran smooth, hopefully it did on the virtual end as well. Um, with that, any other council comments? All right, we will take, we will review uh, this meeting, take feedback on how it went, um, but this is how meetings are gonna run for a while. I think the only other comment I wanna give, I do wanna give a COVID update and again, we hear directly from the health department every single day, and there's some good resources out there as well. Um, the stats, the, the updated statistics come out about five o'clock each day. Um, and this is for Sarpy and Cass County because we have a combined health department. So as of today, there are 35 confirmed positive tests. And again, that's only of the tests that have been going on, but the, um, of the tests that have happened, we've got 35 confirmed. 95% of those are in SARPI. And for zip code 68046 and 68133, so Papillion, uh, there are nine COVID positives as of today. Of those 35, seven are hospitalized and seven have recovered. Um, so it tells you 80% are not hospitalized, so they're quarantining at home. Um, of the, one of the surprises I think people think of COVID, they think of it's of the older and the people with bad health. Um, 23 of those 35, so 65% of them are below the age of 50. Um, eight are 50 to 64, so that means only four are 65 and above. So this is not an old people's thing. Of those 35, 21 are travel or direct contact, which says 12 of them are community spread. That's one third is community spread. So again, why have we closed playground equipment? Why have we closed baseball fields? Why are we telling people not to gather? Um, it's the community spread. 
the modeling that is being used um, both at the national level and the state level and at the county level, they're all using about the same modeling. And for Nebraska, as of a couple of hours ago, the model indicated April 24th will probably be when we'll be hitting the peak of the curve. Um, so from now until the 24th, it's only gonna get worse. Um, on the so we've got about 17 days of the continued increase. That's the peak of the curve, and then it's like a bell curve, so now it comes back down. That's about another month uh, to come back down. So what we're experiencing in April, realistically, we're gonna experience in May. So that's a mindset for people to get used to. Um, that peak on 424, they are, so let, me, let me back up. To date, in Nebraska, there have been 11 deaths to date. On the 24th, they're predicting 18 deaths just on the 24th and again on the 25th. So that gives you an idea of what this curve is doing uh, statewide. So again, why are people hearing the governor and everybody else stay home, stay healthy, but stay connected? Um, when you go to the grocery store, just take one member. Uh, don't take the whole family. Um, respect the six foot in the stores. When you're on the park and our trails, um, respect the six feet. Don't go in big groups. There's been some discussion of should the parks and trails even be open. Um, I will tell you my stance is as this goes on and people stay in their home, mental health is becoming a very critical issue. Um, and we need to be very as much concerned about mental health as we do the other things. And so as long as we can keep the parks and the trails open, people are getting outside fresh air and getting exercise that goes directly to mental health. So we want to do everything we can do to keep those open, but we can only do it if people respect the six foot and no groups. Um, if the public is listening to this, um, we just want to make them aware violation of that 10 and doing those other things because it's a directive health measure of the governor and the health department, it's actually a class five misdemeanor that you can be cited for. Uh, so respect the six feet, respect the one out. Um, and as people need uh, reliable information and not rumors, uh, the CDC is always a source, Department of Health and Human Services, uh, SARPI CAS Health Department, and on the city's webpage, papillion.org, uh, there is slash coronavirus and we put official information out there. Um, I think that's <clears throat> most of my updates. I'll look for counsel for any other comments. If not, thank you for your patience. We went a lot more slow and deliberate than we usually do, uh, but thank you very much. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion by Councilman Glover. Second, Second by Councilman Clute. Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Glover. Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. We are adjourned. <laughs>